My name is Sam Bachnin, and I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. Stephen Jobs had one important insight in his entire life, that people are imbeciles and should be treated as such. Prior to this epiphany, this college dropout had failed in everything he had done and touched, to the point of being ousted by a soft drinks executive from the very company that he had founded. Indeed, by 1985, Steve Jobs' products had been roundly rejected by both the robust business market and the fledgling home market. It may have been Steve Jobs' exposure to Pixar that taught him that the vast majority of people being stupid, consumers are more interested in visuals, bells, whistles, and status symbols than in content, functionality, and substance. What matters is how the product looks, not what it does and how it does it. Hence the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, breathtakingly designed contractions which is with decidedly inferior functions. Jobs created the perfect content read junk delivery vehicles because as the obnoxious narcissist that he was, he honed in on the vulnerabilities and shortcomings of the members of his bargaining cult. Yet, Jobs is universally lauded in the media as a visionary and a genius. Why this blanketed endorsement? Is it merely the infamous herd mentality of most journalists and pundits? Is hagiography back in vogue? Is being bon ton more, more important than being right? indiscriminately fawning on public figures, remember Obama, is nothing new. But rewriting history the way the media has just done with jobs is a nadir. Erdogan, Turkey's Prime Minister, is another example of such unbridled and fatuous adulation. As Turkey's potentate, he succeeded to alienate the country's two stalwart geopolitical allies, the United States and Israel, and to shoot his mouth off at polities and regimes near and far, from Greece to China. Truly Erdogan is nothing but an urbane version of Ahmadinejad, a newfound ally. Erdogan seems to prefer the company of Syria, Russia, Iran, Kosovo, and Bosnia-Herzegovina to the European Union, and more generally the West. Steeped in anti-Semitism, the topic of a virulent play that he had written, directed and produced, and other peasant prejudices, Erdogan is far from being the brightest star in the galaxy. The list of monarchy and bladderdash, balderdash spewed up by, his, uh, by this paragon of a new Muslim Turkey is impressive. Any name. Intellect is evidently not Erdogan's strongest suit. Yet the international media hail this loser as the new Kissinger, replete with vision and the audacity to see, to see through. Why this oversight and deliberate blindness? Is it a sense of European guilt for having rejected Turkey's advances? Does the dreariness of the landscape of world leadership make this backwater politician stand out? Is it his brave principal stance against Israel, thus ingratiating himself with the Arab world? No wonder the internet has become the prime source of news, relegating the traditional media, both print and electronic, to the dustbin. The readers cannot trust the press. One has to wade through several media outlets and to read between the lines to get to a semblance of the real picture. Far easier to accomplish these Herculean tasks online, or to give up on journalism altogether and to limit oneself to opinions and entertainment. Hence, Steve Jobs, in our brave, Nietzschean world.